Is WandaVision overrated? Is WandaVision overrated? I gotta say this. It is to me. Now, before you all bite my head over this, there will be some spoilers later on, but let me just say what I think about it. I think this show was very well done. I think Elizabeth Olsen did a great job like always. Paul Bettany, fantastic as Vision as always. This is great. This is a true love letter to old TV shows. Old sitcoms like I Love Lucy, Malcolm in the Middle, to uh, freaking um, Dick Van Dyke. There's a lot of great things I like about WandaVision, the whole sitcom stuff. Basically, Wanda created this world of hers during her grief of losing vision and all the shit she's been through in her entire life she takes over a town and there's this town the people who are there she puts them like in a sitcom and now she's with vision they're married they have a, a different job they have a job and all that stuff and different sitcoms are, are for each episode and wanda's really exploring her and wanda is basically trying to have that happy go lucky life that she's always wanted she always wanted to have kids she's always wanted to have her brother's still around. She always wanted Vision to not die. And she's going through these emotions. And what this entire show basically is. I would not be surprised if they even put this in, in a college course. About the psychological issues. And how people deal with grief. How to get over it. And I really did enjoy WandaVision. The problem is though. It's very predictable. <laughs> like after episode 5. Now the whole thing of the sitcoms. It kind of gets old. But it's still entertaining. It's not like this is a show I'm going to watch a billion times over. This is not a show that I'm going to appreciate like Luke Cage, like Daredevil, like Punisher. But this is a good show. This is a very good show. I just don't love it. I really did enjoy, again, the sitcoms are amazing and all that stuff. But then, it's just really with the WandaVision show. There's two characters and you only could do so much for nine episodes of Wanda just lying to Vision. And basically... I want, I want, want to like to vision about the, what's happening, what's out there in the real world. Why can't he remember his past? There's only so much he could do. So they have want vision in that reality world, in that television sitcom world. Then you have the real world where Sword, who is run, used to be run by the Captain Marvel's best friend, whose daughter it was her Monica Rambo. She is actually a pretty dang good character. She has like a she came back after the blip and all that stuff after she turned to dust and she realized that her mother is dead and she was in charge of swords. So she comes back, her mother's dead, she's dealing with grief just like Wanda and she needs to get over it as well. Well, not get over it, she just needs to accept it and try to move on. And I really did enjoy it. The problem is though with the show, they did this, there's like two villains in the show. One of them you can't really see coming, the other one is downright predictable and it just got downright annoying and stupid. It was just straight up stupidity, how predictable and like a major stereotype. We got the direct agent, and this is spoilers, direct agent of S.W.O.R.D. He is basically the typical white evil corporation dude that's gonna, uh, wants the government to, uh, uh, wants the government power. He wants all the power, the militarization and all that stuff. He wants to control everything. We got one of those things again. We got one of those big stereotypes. The evil white a uh, guy in charge, the evil guy, the white guy in charge is the evil bad dude, and he's a he's a mastermind or something like that. It's just stupid. When you see that happens, it just becomes a very predictable show. I didn't care for nothing after. <coughs> I didn't care for nothing after, like, after like episode five when they were dealing with Monica Rambo and all this stuff, and when she was dealing with the director of Sword. We all knew what director of Sword was going with every single dang thing. We all knew he was trying to sabotage Wanda, trying to get her killed. We knew he was going to create white vision. We knew all this stuff. I didn't basically care for him. Monica getting powers, that was nice. And it's going to be quite interesting to see what's going to happen uh, with her later on in the films and all that. But to me, I did enjoy this just after you see the sitcoms. And it's really, really the sitcoms are basically long chapters of Wanda's happiness that she wants. But you get little hints of to her madness to her psyche, to basically how she's doing it mentally and all that stuff. So it's just a very well done TV show. It's just, it's just downright predictable. And I gotta be honest with you, this is not a show I'm always gonna, I'm not gonna rewatch probably. This was a one and done uh, deal for me. This is not something I could watch like a thousand times over like uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier or like Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. This is just a one and done deal. It's not because the ad story is terrible. It's not because the acting is terrible. It's just a simple story, and it was a very long process. Like, it's like 30 minutes. Some of the episodes are longer than others. 30 minutes for one episode, 45 minutes for another. And then the... It's just 
takes... I feel like this could be just run down. I really think you could just made a movie about this. Uh, but the sitcom, they got the miniseries, and I really did appreciate what they did with Wanda's character and how she eventually becomes a Scarlet Witch and whether they're playing whether she's going to be a hero or a villain. And it's, I'm looking forward to Doctor Strange 2 where they're going to... Hopefully, they do her justice like the show was doing her justice. And I got to say this, I always loved Wanda... And I always was sympathetic towards her cause because, again, she lost her parents at a young age of 10. She lost her brother, also creating Ultron in a sense. And then afterwards, she had no one in her life. Then Vision gave her some happiness, and then he was killed off. And then she, first she had to kill him, then he had to kill it, and then she had to watch him die again. And she's resurrected, and it's just a tragic story of Wanda Maximoff. And I really do enjoy her character. I really enjoyed the introduction of her sons. I know a lot of people are pissed off about the Quicksilver thing. Like, it ain't really Quicksilver. And I gotta say this. The fact that, he, that he's played by a guy named Boner. It's just like the Captain Marvel shit with Nick Fury's eye. Don't do it. To me, I don't think you should show the X-Men stuff like the crossovers, if anything like that. Don't bring the actors around here if you're just gonna do crap with them. If you're not gonna actually reveal them as the actual real life character don't have them there it plays with the fans heartstrings and they're going to be left disappointed and i know a lot of people love this x-men versions of quicksilver i never did because i like comic book i like the comic book counterpart which was to me aaron taylor johnson version in uh, uh, avengers age of ultron that was my favorite version of quicksilver this version is just basically i think he's more in touch with barry allen's of that stuff i really enjoy quicksilver in age of ultron fox quicksilver never really cared for him I know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's controversy right there. But to me, I think WandaVision is a very good show. I think it's overrated. I think a lot of people just love this show just because of the fact that a lot of TV shows now are terrible. A lot of TV shows now are not that great. They have like too much political messages and they're to, uh, sacrifice uh, like themes over the, uh, and they sacrifice uh, the the stories over themes. And I just think it was stupid. But I think WandaVision had a great theme, a great message. But people with their grief, how they deal with it, and how they could eventually move on from it. I really did enjoy WandaVision. I really did. I'm going to give this uh, series, uh, the mini series, a B plus. It's a very good, uh, it's a very good watch. It's definitely a must watch for one time. But it's not a thing that you know, constantly need to rewatch. You could go back and see the little hints of stuff, but you could watch it off YouTube and all that stuff, like little clips of what these theories actually mean. But I really did enjoy WandaVision. I don't think this is a terrible show. This is a very good show. It's just a very predictable show. Kind of the pacing was a little bit off. But to me, I enjoyed this show. So what y'all think, everyone? Do you think WandaVision was a great show? I think it's contents for one of the best superhero shows of all time. To me, I don't think it's one of the best superhero shows of all time. Just because I felt this was more like a psychological drama of a person's grief. It's a psychological drama more than a superhero show. In, that, in my personal opinion. I did enjoy this show again. But to me, it's not the greatest superhero show of all time. I think it was a very good show. I think it was... I must watch for one time, but other than that, WandaVision, not my favorite. But let me know think everyone did you think it was a bad show, did you think it was a good show? Let me know think everyone, my name is Elise Conrad, everybody. Uh, bye.